Hey guys, welcome back to No Case Your Name. It's me, Ella, and this is episode number 94. Hey guys, welcome back. My voice may still sound a little different because I still have a little bit of sickness in my face, <laughs> but not a whole lot. And also, Jesse is doing a whole lot better. His rash has completely gone away, uh, and it's been two days since it's been back, so he should be in the clear unless he gets exposed to whatever it was again. But I wanted to update really fast on that. And I wanted to thank everybody who um, commented on the last video about uh, why, you know, why we were gone. <laughs> and uh, for all the thoughts and prayers and emails and messages and all that stuff. Uh, I, we all appreciate it a lot. And he is doing a whole lot better. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and hop into the episode now. I do actually have some finished objects. I only have four that I can show you physically, like right now. And then I got pictures of the other two. Technically three, but it's a set of two things and then another thing. So I do have four, five, six finished objects all together this week. And I am working on two whips. <laughs> and one of them's a new whip. I, I still haven't addressed that situation fully. But um, the other one's the Christmas tree skirt. And I have a little bit of update about it. And I'll get to that when I talk about whips. Alright, so my first finished object... Um, S objects <laughs> are Christmas ornaments. I like to make homemade, uh, you know, crocheted Christmas ornaments every year for my brother, my sister, my mom, and then ours, you know, ourselves here. <laughs> so this year, thanks to Amber at Ooh All Crochet, who is one of my, I would say she's one of my best friends that I've made uh, since starting YouTube and being in the yarn community um, online and all that. Me and her talk like every day. <laughs> but um, she started making the snow globe ornaments by Repeat Crafter Me for her craft fair and she has been selling them which is really cool but because she was making so many of them and she was we were constantly talking about them and she was showing me pictures and stuff it made me want to make them and last year they got huge and everybody was making them with the buttons that you can get at Walmart and Michaels and Hub Lobby and Joann's and uh, I never hopped on that train I wanted to I just never had the time but this year I did so I thought it'd be cute to make those for the the annual Ella ornaments <laughs> that I make every year so I did make four but technically I made eight because um it's it's made it like an applique style and I made two of two for each of them to make it thicker and I'll show you what I mean so I got four of them that I made <laughs> and I stuck to the colors that uh, was on repeat crafting me I used uh, it's blowing out a little bit red heart super saver white light blue and cherry red and so this is two of them and then I crocheted them together around the sides and I just I picked up some uh, Rudolph buttons some snowflakes and another set that had just some wintry things in them. I couldn't find any little Santas. I wanted to make some with little Santas in it. Mama. And elves. So there's, I haven't figured out which one I want to keep yet. <laughs> but I'm going to keep one. And then the other three are going to go to my mom, my brother, and my sister. And uh, yeah. So i got to figure out which one I want to keep. I think I want to keep the one with the Cardinal because I love Cardinals. But uh, I'm going to still try to look for more Santa and stuff buttons because I'd like to make some more of these. And then similar uh, ornament types but with the buttons on them. I think it would be cute. So uh, all i got left to do is put some hooks on them. And I have some fancier hooks that someone sent me last year in a package of ornaments. And then I have some that my sister gave me. And then I have just some of the regular hooks like the little metal things. So i got to figure out which one will work best for these and stick them on there. And then I can get ready to give them to my family. On Thanksgiving, because that's usually when I give them the ornaments, is on Thanksgiving, so that they can put it on their trees. I don't think I said, they are a free pattern on Repeat Crafter Me's website, and it'll be linked below. Super quick pattern. I whipped all these up, I think, in one evening. Because it's just, you start with the blue, and you make it, and then you just do one row of white. It looks like there's two, because I did crochet them together. And then you attach the red, or whatever color you want to use, and you do a few rows. <laughs> but, um... Like I said, I did put two together and then crocheted around them just to make them thicker so that they won't be so curly on the tree. I thought about stuffing them a little bit, but then I was like, nah, <laughs> I'll just uh, do it this way. I think they look fine. I think they're super cute. And uh, you can do any colors and use any kind of buttons, really, uh, to whatever your, you or your family likes. And this would also be cute to um, modify into like a gumball machine because you could do like a solid color circle. And then you could put buttons all in it to look like gumballs. I think that'd be cute. <laughs> That's what I was thinking when I was making these, that it looked like a gumball machine. Okay, my next finished object, I'll pop up a picture, and it's of my sister, and she is okay with me showing it. <laughs> I made her one of the Bag-A-Day cowls, um, wide neck cowls, 
recently and then I, I made her she wanted a matching uh air warmer like I made for myself so it's the hope air warmer by yarn and chai and um I did I make the pattern exactly the way the pattern is written except I didn't cinch it to look like a turban style I just left it open for hers and mine so she like she loves it and she wore it to her trunk retreat that she did at her husband's fire hall and uh I kept her toasty so woohoo <laughs> but the yarn that I let's see here it's called Red Heart Colorscapes I think her colorway was Montreal I think I'm not 100 percent sure <laughs> but um I enjoyed I love making those cows I got some more of that colorscape yarn somewhere on my yarn wall I reorganized all my yarn the other day I might show you guys in, in the end of this in like a little random clip but um I've got two more balls of the blue one that I made for myself and I've got a couple other balls. I don't know. I don't know what colors they are. But I might go ahead and make some more of those cows just for the heck of it. But I don't really know who to give them to. <laughs> I need to send them to somebody, I guess. But um, I love that ear warmer pattern. It's super fast and it's cute and textured. And it works good. It's functional. Functional. Is that the right word? My last finished object is actually a pattern that I kind of, I guess I wrote myself. <laughs> I, um, I got a message from a woman that goes to my mom's church. She's all good friends with my mom. And she sent me a picture first of like Santa, looks like Santa's stomach and the buckle, you know, boot cuffs. And she asked me first if I could make boot cuffs. And I was like, yeah. And then she sent me a picture of the Grinch ones um, that she found, I guess, online somewhere. <laughs> and asked me if I could make those ones. And I said, sure. <laughs> so I did look around and try to find a pattern. And I couldn't find a pattern for the Grinch boot cuffs anywhere. <laughs> I didn't dig forever because I was on a time limit or whatever. I searched on Pinterest, on Google, and... Um, on Facebook because I think she shared me a, no she sent me a Pinterest link but the Pinterest link when you clicked on it, it just it was just the photo so um, I was like well it's pretty simple looking I'll just do it myself so I did just last night I sat down and started working on them and I wrote up everything that I did and I made it into a PDF and it's on my Facebook group in the files section for free because it's a licensed character <laughs> I can't sell it but um, so I just wrote it wrote down everything that I did and there's a picture on there and I, I tried to do it as best as I can it's not a tested pattern I haven't sent it to people to you know check and see if I made any errors because I'm not gonna be selling it I just wrote it up real fast and made it into a PDF and it's on Facebook group I already said that but I said I didn't get it so if you do go and download it um, if you find any errors in it just let me know and I will try to edit it and re-upload it on there and um, I think I, I probably would have popped up a picture by now of what they look like. Some people are having a little bit of problem getting it to download. I don't, I'm not sure why. I was trying to look up and I think it might be because people are trying to download it on a mobile device like a phone or a tablet. It seems like some people have issues downloading files from Facebook to phones and tablets. So if you can't get it to download on your phone or tablet, <laughs> um, from what I found in the, from searching the question, um, Facebook people suggest to update your app for Facebook or for uh, the PDF reader. <laughs> I forget what it's called. Adobe or whatever. PDF reader. and Or to like close the app out and open it back up. Uh, basic, you know, turn it off and on type things. Um, and if that still doesn't work, I'll, I'll try to figure out another way to offer it to you guys. I think maybe Google Documents or something. I could upload it on there just to have it out for free. Or I could just write it as like a post on Facebook. I just, I like PDFs personally because they're easy to print and stuff and um, that's why I made it a PDF and it's super easy to make PDFs uh, anyways. But, um, so that's the Grinch boot cuffs <laughs> that I made. I did use Red Heart Super Saver uh, black and white, bright uh, yellow, cherry red, and spring green. And then I used Pipsqueak white for the brim of his hat and his pom-pom. And for his eyebrows, <laughs> I used Yarn B cloud nine I think it's called in black because it's like a it's kind of like pipsqueak but thinner a fluffy black to make his big unibrow and uh but you know you could substitute any yarns that are similar colors and you don't have to use furry yarns if you don't have them you could just use white and black uh it's optional <laughs> but I, it was really quick to make I made them the first one took a little bit longer because I was having to stop and write down everything I did but the second one whipped up super fast and it's really easy there's minimal sewing the only things that's sewed on is the eyes and the nose uh, the eyebrow and the mouth are stitched on and you got to attach the pom-pom to the hat but the hat point part that flops over is crocheted on to the top of the hat or the 
boo cuff. <laughs> so it's a really quick, fun pattern, and it would be easy to um, modify it for any size leg. The ones that I made for her were uh, 20 inches around. Her calves were 20 inches around. And uh, you can make it for anyone with larger or smaller legs. Just your starting chain, you would chain to where you wrap it around the calf. Um, you want it to be a little tight because it will stretch. You know, it's crochet, it does stretch. So you don't, if it's a 20 inch calf, you don't want to make a 20 inch starting chain. You want to make it a little bit smaller than, smaller than that. Because when you do your crochet rounds, they'll be a little bit bigger anyways. And you want it to be a little bit snug so that they don't fall down into their boot. <laughs> but yeah, but you don't want it to be so tight that it like cuts off circulation. But anyways, that's the boot cuffs that I made. <laughs> I was pretty proud that I wrote that up so quickly. Um, I feel like I'm getting a little bit better at writing patterns. I am currently working on a Christmas and a groomy. Uh, I was hoping to have it done by now, but with us getting sick and all that this last week, everything got slowed down. I had plans to this week finish that pattern and work on some bag designs. I got some material over there. It's kind of buried. buried. <laughs> but it's some Christmas prints that I picked up at my local thrift store. And also some that I bought. I bought the Grinch and November for a Christmas, Christmas print. Not a Halloween-y print. It's actually a Christmassy print. To make some, I guess, prototypes for the new bag patterns that I'm wanting to work on and um, I'm trying to eliminate making notion pouches uh, at least the way that I originally did because they're a pain in the butt and I break needles on them all the time and that adds up but um, so I'm gonna try to work on that this coming week this weekend Devin has to work so I, I might do it a little bit this weekend unless he can get off but if he's off I always use my my weekends for family time because we don't get to hang out much during the week so that's why a lot of times on Saturdays and Sundays I don't really answer people's questions or comments or emails because I'm busy with Jesse and Devin. And I always try to get caught up the, next, the following week. <laughs> Anyways, that was a lot. Okay, whips. I have two active whips that I'm actually working on. I have some more whips. Everybody, if you watch me, you already know I have some dormant whips that's been there for a while. And um, I have some back there that, you know, I, I did a video about... Uh, finishing or frogging and I picked the ones that I thought I was gonna finish the ones I'm gonna frog I still haven't frogged them yet they're still back there but I am still gonna frog them and there's actually some more that I'm probably gonna just, just gonna go ahead and frog because if I haven't worked on them by now I obviously don't want to work on them so anyways let's get into my whips my first active whip is an, an amigurumi by Mary Smith she's one of my favorite amigurumi designers she makes big large ones and it's living in my Grinch bag <laughs> while it will fit in here because it will be way bigger than this bag when it gets done but it's parts are in here right now and this is from Kim at um, her YouTube channel is Pettis Kim but her podcast name is a crafty nomad and I love Kim <laughs> I always talk about that y'all if you watch me you know that I love this bag and I love Kim but um, <clears throat> Mary Smith on her Facebook group she hosts she has two Facebook groups one for her just her everything and one for crochet alongs and she randomly has crochet alongs, usually every month, but she skips some months uh, for one of her patterns. And it's like discounted, you can buy it. And then everyone who finishes the pattern in the time frame gets a free pattern from her shops. So this month is, for November, is Frosty the Snowman, which I'll pop up a, a finished picture of him. I haven't made him before. And that's one reason I wanted to make this, because I haven't made him. And I don't have hardly any Christmas decorations. <laughs> Once I took Halloween down, I realized that I really need to beef up my Christmas decoration uh, supplies. But week one started on November 1st and it ends tomorrow, which is the 7th. So if you want to participate in week one, you need to hurry up. <laughs> but um, it doesn't, you don't have to do each week in the time frame to get the free pattern at the end. I think they do give, from the finished weeks, the people who do it on time, they do like a random draw for one person to get a pattern. I think, that's how I used to do it. I haven't done one in a while. And then at the end, everyone who finishes the whole thing gets a free pattern. But, week one was the feet and arms. So here are Frosty's feet. <laughs> See, they're big. He turns out big. I have a, I, um, an elf, a Santa, a vampire, a bunny rabbit, and a big bird that she all made. That I, uh, this is just Red Heart. No, no, no. This is Karen, one pound white. This is one that someone sent me as a gift. And uh, they sent me two one pounds. And this is the first one that I cracked into for this. And then the little hands which you can change the color of the actual hands to be mittens, but I just left it white. And I love the way she does the thumb, because you can't see it because it's blown out, but the thumbs are, you crochet them separately, 
but then you don't have to sew them on. When you're doing the hand, you just crochet it right on there and attach it, and they're crocheted together. No sewing at all, these little thumbs. And she does that with the ones that have fingers too, <laughs> like her elf and her Santa and all that. They have all five fingers, and they're, you make them separately, but then you crochet them all together. You don't have to sew them on, which is awesome, because sewing on little parts is sucky sometimes. <laughs> but I got week one done, which is arms and legs. I'm assuming week two is going to be the body, but uh, they haven't announced it yet. They'll announce it tomorrow. Um, they're on London time. The woman who is hosting it, because Mary's super busy. She lives up in, I think, Michigan, but... Um, she designs a bunch of patterns, and she also sews a lot and sells, like, hand-sewed stuffed animals on her Etsy shop and stuff. And, um, so the girl who's hosting it for her is, like, a, just a friend of hers, but she's on UK time, so. And they're way ahead of us, so it actually might end tonight. I don't know. <laughs> but I I'll link it below either way. You can check it out. I'm using my favorite elf hook with the penguin on it my sister bought me. So it's just a very Christmassy bag. It's got a penguin hook, a snowman's in it, and my Grinch bag. So that's my whip number one. <laughs> my whip number two is my Christmas tree skirt, which I wish I had done already because my tree has been up since Halloween night. <laughs> and um, this is a skirt that I showed last time that I had no idea who made it. And um, a lot of people suggested um, Crystal from Bag -A Day and there was another one, something Fox. And they do have patterns that are super similar to this one. But the starting off part is different. So it's not the same pattern. And then I had a viewer named Rita who emailed me and offered to help me search because she's like really good at, um, I think she called it sleuthing. <laughs> but she's really good at like snooping around and, and finding out stuff. So um, I sent her everything that I had of it and then she did some digging and she did actually find an old, what's that form called? Like Crochetville, I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> It'll be linked below. Post about this pattern. Are about Christmas tree skirts and then the woman who did write this pattern did comment this pattern on there and that's probably where I found it a long time ago because like I said I've had this pattern for years I don't even know I think it was posted in 2007 I've probably had it since 2007 <laughs> this has always been my go-to Christmas tree skirt and I've just always loved it and made it but she found it and I will link below the thread that has that and all you gotta do is when it loads just scroll down a little bit until you see a post by a woman named Lisa and the pattern will be written out in her post. There was a picture there, but it's not available anymore. And Lisa is the woman who wrote it. But there's no way to get a hold of Lisa. We don't even have her last name. Her account on the Crochetville or whatever it's called. Doesn't have any contact information or anything like that. Um, so there's really no way to get hold of her about it. So I have been asked to make a tutorial for this. And I'm not going to because, um, you know, it's not my pattern. And I don't want to make someone else's pattern tutorial. And potentially make money off of it when it's not even um, my pattern. But maybe, who knows, maybe in the future I might uh, write my own <laughs> pattern and uh, go from there. But the beginning part is this part that is super different from all the other ones. This is real lacy and intricate looking. And most of the other ones don't look like this. And this starts with a starting chain. A lot of the other ones start with like a granny top stitch up here. But this is what I got so far. I did. I think I have put a little bit on it since last time you seen it. I don't know. Maybe not. Let's see. Where's my... Right here's where I got to. I pulled out a stitch. Let me make that bigger. Ugh, I got real big. <laughs> but um, I think I picked it up once to work on it and we got busy. So I didn't really add much. But I'm just using Red Heart Super Saver White Spring Green and Cherry Red for it. And I'm just going to continue this pattern of, I think I'm doing, let's see here, three rows of red, two white, three green, two white, oh no, 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 I'm going to keep doing it that way, all the way to the end, and the end is, I don't know, <laughs> our tree is really fat and white at the bottom, so I'm going to try to make it to where it sticks out a little bit, and uh, I don't know if I'll be done with it this year, but it's not a big deal, it'll be ready for next year, I guess, <laughs> but yeah, I do love this pattern, and I will, like I said, link it below, you just have to scroll down a little bit into the, um, conversation to find Lisa's post where she's talking about her pattern and she shared she does share it written out there so she must not mind other people having it she just I would rather have her permission to go further with it okay I had to stop recording because I was hollering at Jesse I thought he hollered at me but it was something on his that he's watching that happens to me all the time because he watches YouTube videos uh, of kids and their families doing you know playing and stuff 
And I'll, every time I hear someone say mama, I'm like, what? And he's like, it wasn't me. <laughs> but I got some happy mail from Canada, and that made me super excited. And uh, I thought it was really cool because when I get packages from out of the country, I, it's not in my informed delivery. It only counts as like U.S. tracking stuff is on there. So every time I get something from out of the country, it's a complete surprise unless someone messages me and tells me something's coming. But even then, it's a surprise because, like, from Canada and the UK and all that, it takes a couple weeks to get here through all the customs and all the stuff they got to do um, to actually get to me. So um, it's always a surprise. And I recently got another one from uh, Canada with the candy and I actually ate one of those earlier. I had them sitting here or somewhere. The Fizz. I've never had one of those, but it was actually really good. But this one came from Donna. And she is... The Sunshine Eclair. I'm always afraid I'm going to say people's things wrong. <laughs> but she sent me this cute homemade card. And it's got like a little watercolor girl on it. And a cute little um, sheep pin that I've seen other people have been getting. And I've been seeing it and I was like, oh, I really want more of those. But here's the card. And this is like a little watercolor girl. And there's the sheep pin. And it's just pinned on there. And she just wrote a nice little note. And, ah, I'm dropping it. Hasn't. And it was in an envelope in the bag and I totally understand that because uh, the mail stuff is crazy and it's got some washi on there it's like travel postage so that's cool but now that I've showed that I can take that pen off and use it on one of my bags <laughs> but also on the um that's got addresses on it too I'm trying to find something I could on the uh mailer there's an elephant stamp <laughs> I thought that was so cute I love stamps. I wish I was better at doing stuff like that. <laughs> I don't see how people, like Marsha from, uh, made by Marsha Mom, Marsha, <laughs> she does stamps and then colors them and I don't get how you, do you put the ink on there in different colors or do you stamp it and then color it afterwards? I don't know. But I'm super excited to get that little sheet and I'm probably going to put that on my Grinch bag just so I can look at it. Okay, what else are we going to talk about? <clears throat> One I want to share, um, on the Facebook group, I made a post about swapping Christmas cards with me. Uh, I would love to do an actual Christmas uh, swap again where, like, we pick each, you know, I, sp I split everybody up into twos <laughs> and you guys send it gifts to each other. But that is a lot of work. And it's even a whole lot more work when one person decides they don't want to do it anymore because then you have someone who doesn't have a partner and you got to match that up. And sometimes multiple people don't do it. Or they get gifts and then they don't send gifts and it's just a lot of hassle <laughs> and it's really hard it was hard two years ago when I did it and my my uh, subscriptions and all it was way lower then and it was really hard then so I can only imagine that it would be crazy now if I did it because I have over 5,000 subscribers and over 1,400 members on the Facebook group so it would it would be really hard <laughs> and as much as I'd love to do something like that because one of these days I want to do an advent swap with someone because I want to do one of those things where I get to open something every day up to Christmas That'd be so fun. but uh, I got to plan ahead for that it's too late in the year to do that now but I will do that soon maybe Amber Amber let's do that next year <laughs> but um I want to do card swap because that's easy you just send a card it's like a well, how much are stamps now 50 cents 50 cents you know in the states and then it's a little bit more if you're sending out of the country but, um, so I put a post on my Facebook group, and if you're not a member of that, the link is below, check it out. <laughs> um, and so it's basically just, because I love getting Christmas cards, so anyone who wants to do that, I had email me their address, and then I'll send mine back, even though it's also in the description box here, <laughs> if you're interested. And, um, I just thought it'd be fun, so I will get cards from everybody, and I will send cards to everybody. I've been making a list. I got a list on my computer. And I got a list from mail that I've been getting. I always write down people's addresses in case I need to send them something. And then yesterday I made a bunch of labels <laughs> for myself. I only made 60, but I might end up having to make more. But it just, it just says Merry Christmas and it's got our address. And it's just our P.O. box, so it's not like where we live. So I don't mind sharing it. <laughs> but I made 60 of them and then we'll go from there to see if I need to make more. And we're going to do photo cards. We're going to take pictures, hopefully this Sunday. Just We always take goofy ones usually a uh, family picture and then I'll get them printed and then that's what I'll send everybody just because it's easier but they don't have to be photo cards I had people ask if theirs needed to be photo cards and they don't just any kind of holiday card you know it doesn't have to be it could be store-bought or a photo or you could have made it yourself or you know whatever or, or even postcards because <laughs> I love postcards too but I just wanted to get snail mail because I love getting uh, Christmas cards and stuff and uh, before I started doing YouTube, I rarely got any. I got them from like my grandmother 
and my sister. <laughs> That's about it. Um, but ever since I started doing YouTube in 2017, I've been getting a bunch of Christmas cards from fellow podcasters and uh, viewers. So it's been a lot of fun. And I still have every single one I've ever gotten. I have every note and everything. I have a big stack right here, actually, of cards and stuff that I got in the last month or so. That I got to put in my big box of other cards and stuff. Because I always go through it and make sure that I didn't miss questions or something. And I always write down everybody's address. I got a big book of addresses in case I need to send someone something or whatever. So, uh... Yeah, that's the card swap stuff. If you're interested in that, you can either shoot me an email and I'll pop it up on the bottom of the screen, but it will also be in the description box. Or you can go to check out the post that's on the Facebook group, which will also be linked below. <laughs> and uh, I think that's everything. Talked about the Grinch pattern, finished objects, whips, <sighs> happy mail. I think that's everything. <laughs> um, I did want to again say thanks to everybody who sent good thoughts and vibes and juju and prayers and whatever you believe in for me and Jesse. As you can tell, I'm a lot better. I still got a little bit of gunk in there, but it's slowly clearing up. Slowly clearing up. Jesse's been great ever since Monday. He broke out really bad with a rash Sunday night, and uh, we just treated him with medicine, and then he still had it Sunday or Monday morning. That's when we went to the doctor and they told us to get Zyrtec and try it. And that seemed to kick its butt right out of there. But uh, he's still got one more dose of steroids. So I'm going to give him tonight. It's his last dose of it. And then uh, we'll see <laughs> what happens <laughs> after. I did lay off the Benadryl because I don't like giving him Benadryl anyways. Because it's so dangerous. And uh, I'm always afraid I'm going to mess it up. So uh, he had Zyrtec yesterday and steroids. And today so far he's ha not had anything until steroids tonight. And so far, so good. I keep checking him <laughs> throughout the day. I'll, I'll give him a once-over to make sure there's no spots anywhere. But so far, so good. And he's definitely um, back to normal energy-wise. He's been running around like crazy and eating everything in sight. And those, the last few days of the weekend when he was sick, he wasn't eating hardly anything. So I think he's on the up and up. We still have no idea what caused it. But in, we may never know. Because um, I guess if he comes in contact with it again, or if he starts again, we'll know it's probably something in our house. But it could have been anything from my mom's house or our house or something outside. You know, we don't know. We won't know unless it continues. And then we'll take them to an allergy doctor and get them tested and all that. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully it was just a one-time thing. But uh, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Okay, right, I guess that's everything for this episode. I'm going to say my goodbyes, but then I'm going to say something else for the people who... You know, I'll say goodbyes for people who want to leave and everybody else can stay. <laughs> but... Um, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you think someone else will like it, share it. And subscribe if you're not. <laughs> I would love to have you guys. I've over 5,000 now, which is ridiculous. A year ago, I only had 2,000. So I've gained that much in just a year. And that's crazy. <laughs> but, um, oh, I did want to say there are still some bags in the shop. A handful. I think four. But they're in there. And uh, there might be some random ones popping up here and there between now and the end of the year. Just because as I'm working on these new patterns... I might, uh, if they're good, you know, and I check them, make sure they're quality approved, I will go ahead and just upload them for sale. So, um, I should be getting some new labels soon, because I ran out of labels last update. Two bags, actually, that I sold didn't have labels on them, but it's just because I ran out of labels and I didn't have time to order new ones. But that's okay, because I got some new ones coming. And, oh, about that, the Border City Quilts, <laughs> I made a Facebook post about it. They, um, they were super appreciative of the review that I gave them and uh, they actually offered my viewers a coupon code. Okay, I had to go look because I forgot. I get confused between the Knit Crate <laughs> code and then this one now. Let me close up because it's all glary. But their coupon code for anything on their site, um, if you when you're checking out, if you use the coupon code no catchy name in all caps, you'll get 10% off your order. And then when you get that order, you'll get a card in your order. I said order a bunch of times. And then that gives you another 10%. The code is on there. So you can like just keep rolling them 10% off and never have to pay for price on, for them. But I'm super excited. And also, this next labels that I'm getting are going to have my logo on them, which I'm excited about. They are able to do that, by the way. I mentioned that in the last video. So I guess if you're a company uh, like me, I guess, I'm, I guess I'm a company, uh, you could always try sending your little logo like an icon logo, the little ones. Uh, like the ones that I put in one of my corners. I don't know, it's in one of the corners right now. <laughs> I haven't edited it yet, so it's somewhere. Uh, that's the one that's going to be on my new labels. But it's going to be a different color than white because the labels are white. So it'll probably be black or red or something. I don't know. 
<laughs> we'll see. She actually sent them, sent them today, so I should get them Saturday, unless the mail goofs up, and then it'll be Monday, but either way, I'm happy. <laughs> I can't wait to see them. But what I was going to say is I did clean out my craft room. I'm currently in it. Different angle for the people who stuck around. Let me just kind of show you. It's dark in here. Um, your, you know, the window is what's lighting me up. The, the lights are off. That used to have yarn on it, and now it has a bunch of sewing stuff and books. Um, Jesse's coming. <laughs> Do you have clothes on? Yes. What you doing? Oh, you got that little book. All right, bye. <laughs> um. Just a bunch of sewing stuff. I got interfacing and batting down there and some buttons, just everything. From some fabric I'm going to be working with soon. This is my zippers <laughs> and my extended thingy for my sewing machine. Still whips and stuff. And these are all my pattern books. And then over here, it's dark and it's really cluttered because I'm still going through everything. These are all empty boxes that I got to deal with. Um, all this yarn used to just kind of be a jumble of yarn. And now it's all my weird yarn. Like, I got my cakes and my hanks up here, and then all my weird, this is like all the furry type yarn, and fuzzy yarn, and velvety yarn, and these are just a bunch of weird variegated yarns, and then down here, you can barely see because it's dark in here, like I said, is uh, like the red heart variegated cat tops, and on the very bottom, you can't see it back there, <laughs> is um, that bottom shelf is like yarn with Stelina and stuff in it and just random yarn I couldn't fit anywhere else <laughs> and then I still have my big scrap box and what's in that other basket oh yeah my, my crochet basket now has cotton yarn in it and the three shelves like this one in my bedroom have all my red heart and red heart ish like I love this yarn and stuff like that um solid colors and I pulled it all out the other day and I color coordinated it again the way it used to be and then it got all jumbled up because I got lazy and I re- stuffed it all in there and organized it really good and it looks a lot better in there so now my yarn is semi organized and then over here there's a box and a bag the box is happy mail yarn that I'm going to be sending out to people randomly <laughs> and secretively because I like giving in secret <laughs> and this other bag is yarn that I um, I was going to send out for happy mail but then I also wanted to do something for people local to me so I'm actually going to take it, and there's some pattern stuff sticking out too that I'm not going to use. I'm going to take it to my local, um, what's it called? Nursing home. <laughs> and um, I called them the other day and asked them if they did crafts or anything with yarn. And um, she was kind of, you know, she was trying to think of what they do. And then I was like, well, or I thought maybe you have some residents that need her crocheting. And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we do have residents who do that. So um, I'm going to take that over to the nursing home and donate it to the residents who need crochet and there's a whole bunch of yarn in there and a bunch of some pattern uh, leaflets and if I can find anything else to stuff in there I will but I wanted to I wanted to give to local people and also have a box for Happy Mail and I have a box down here that I can't show you because it's open that I'm sending to a certain someone <laughs> it's gonna be like a just because gift but also a Christmas gift so yeah but that's the end of this I did a No Catch Name episode and a tiny little vlog at the end of it. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video, which I have no idea when that will be or what it will be about. Uh, November is going to be kind of a slow month video-wise, and then it's going to all pick back up in December when vlog miss <laughs> starts over. There will be some vlogs in November because I like to vlog Thanksgiving. This Saturday, we're going to be going to the Veterans Day Parade. And then maybe towards the end of November, around Thanksgiving, we'll... We'll be going to see some Christmas lights because we always go to one place, usually Thanksgiving night or the night before or after Thanksgiving, uh, with the family to see it. I did, I vlogged about that last year. And also in Lebanon, Tennessee, there's the dancing Christmas lights or something like that. We went to last year and it's a car thing that you drive through and it's like two miles of Christmas lights with music. Um, we're going to be doing that again this year. It starts on the 16th. But I like doing stuff like that later when it's closer to Christmas. So if any of that falls in November, I'll be vlogging, making just random vlogs. And then vlog Vlogmas will start on December 1st. So I'm excited about that. Yee. I guess I'm going to leave it here now because I'd already said my goodbyes. But still, bye everybody.